Hey everyone, before we start the show, I just want to get some plugs out of the way. If you enjoy this podcast and you're into wrestling, check out the Nerds and Marks podcast or Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling. If you're not getting your fill on movie and entertainment discussion, then check out the Entertainment Buffet podcast. If you want to dive into the world of video games, I highly recommend the Dark Cast by my friends over at DarkStation.com. Listen to them cover important topics and interview men and women from all over the industry. Thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Shelved. I am your host, Jeremy Meyer. Um, so things are still kind of moving here on the home front. Um, I, it's this, today's episode is not necessarily a new episode, but it has come to my attention that for some reason that I have been unable to figure out, I've been working on this for a few weeks now, um, our first episode, our Batman Year One episode, for some reason, you can't download it. It's just not listed. I've tried resubmitting it, and it just won't like show up for some reason. So uh, today, we're actually going to repost that episode as a whole nother episode, just so you know people can still have that. Uh, I don't really know why it's not showing up. But um, I would like it to show up because it is our first episode, and even though you know the audio quality is not as good as the other ones, um, I, it, people should still be able to check it out. So today is actually going to be a repost of the first episode, just so we can have that completion on our page, and you know we can have all of our episodes. Um, and you know, honestly, it's gonna it's gonna take a little place or take some time as I you know get things working, get things together. Um, I'm kicking around the idea of maybe, you know, waiting a few months and just banking up a bunch of episodes and do kind of like a season two launch. Um, and just like have a bunch of episodes ready to go. So I don't really go this long without episodes again, and then kind of fill that time before season two with just kind of some bonus stuff, like some commentary tracks, or uh, I do am setting up an interview right now, but, um, Kind of, I've just been, you know, kind of working on my own stuff. Uh, you know, with things getting kind of busy, I've been focusing very heavily on my writing. So that's kind of been a big, important thing right now. Uh, but I am still completely committed to the podcast. I still love doing this podcast. Uh, I'm still getting new listeners and people are still reaching out and loving the show. And that's kind of one of the most important things to me. So rest assured, new episodes are on the way. Um, as I said, I might start like banking them and then do like a season two launch just so I will have an episode ready to go every week. Uh, but in the meantime, I hope you, for those of you who have been wanting to hear the first episode, I know there's a couple of people who have reached out to me. In fact, that's how I found out that, you know, you couldn't get this episode. I had somebody like, hey, did you do ever look at that Batman year one script? It's like, oh, that was actually our first episode. And they were like, oh, I can't download it. And like, it was available on YouTube and some of the other places, but for some reason it just disappeared from the podcast feed. So now we're going to throw that back up there so everyone can hear where it all began. So I hope you enjoy this listen for the first time or re-listen to Batman Year One. <laughs> Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Shelved. So this is it. This is the first episode. Um, I got my friend Eric Zisselman to sit down and talk to me about our first movie, which is Batman Year One. Yeah, Batman Year One based on the graphic novel, based on the animated film, except I guess technically the script was based on the graphic novel. The animated film was also based on the graphic novel because the movie or the movie script, however, that never got made was quite different from the Batman Year One that we all know. So this script came after 1997, Batman and Robin came out and almost killed the comic book movie 
I don't know if you remember, it was pretty much dead until Blade and X-Men came around, and then shortly after Spider-Man 2. But uh, there was there was no Batman movie since 1997, and this was Warner Brothers trying to reboot the Batman franchise, so they brought in Frank Miller to write a script, because he wrote Year One, one of the most famous Batman books of all time, that completely changed the face of Batman forever, and introduced us to the dark Batman that we know. Now, this movie was canceled in 2002, and canceled based on the fact that it was just too dark. It was just, there's, it's bleak. (laughs) Um, But interestingly enough, it it did get a director, Darren Aronofsky, who was a really interesting choice for a Batman movie. And that's the thing alone that would really make me want to see this version of the movie, a Darren Aronofsky Batman movie. I don't know if you've seen Black Swan, but that's a trippy-ass movie. Imagine that with Batman. But yeah, so we sat down to talk about this movie. There's, there's The script is out there. It's, it's similar to the comic, but it differs in just a variety of ways that we'll talk about on the podcast. And it's the, I feel like this is a really good first episode. It's You know, everybody knows Batman. It's a big thing right now with Batman v Superman. We kind of talk a little bit about that kind of stuff. And I just feel like, me and this, we had a great conversation. And this is exactly how I want the podcast to be, just conversations. And we kind of go all over the place, and it leads to from one thing to the other. But we cover all the ground I wanted to cover. I feel like it's a really good demonstration of what this podcast is going to be and what I want it to be. And I really look forward to people hearing it and hearing the reaction and hopefully I'm doing the right thing here but I, I really think everybody's going to enjoy it so this is our first one it goes a little long it goes about an hour um, and I assume a lot of them will probably go that long I guess we'll find out in the coming episodes but uh, I hope you enjoy it I know I certainly enjoyed recording it and I really look forward to doing the next ones and for everyone to hear the next ones but uh, I just want to introduce you to our first episode so this is us talking about the unmade batman year one it's me your host jeremy my this is this is pretty crazy yeah it's weird right yeah i'm just holding a microphone yeah i would like to get um, what are they called? Like Standard a, yeah, or something like, that. like they yeah. came with clips, but uh, nothing to plug them into. Right. So, <laughs> no, you know what? I've seen. Uh, you can. You're uh, gonna have to hold it a little closer. I've seen. <laughs> no, I've seen uh, Tim and Eric where they wear like this, this thing like it's a hanger around their neck, and it just there's a yeah. microphone that just sticks yeah. right there. So that's pretty. Yeah, cool. these are these are way better microphones than what they are <laughs> than that kind of stuff though. These are See, expensive. I got, I got my draft over here. This is what I came out with, and then... Yeah, this guy was showing me up. I wasn't taking notes, and then I was talking to him. He was like, oh, yeah, man, I'm reading. I'm taking notes. I'm, all, I'm like, fuck, man. I'm going to have to start getting more prepared. Yeah, I mean, I just little things that I wanted to fucking remember. Like, dude, there's just the one phrase. No, we're not... I mean, I'm, I'm recording, but... Okay, no, the one phrase that I... That that's perfect blew my right mind there. was uh, instant tracheotomy. Yeah. I was I was like that's fun. There's a lot of things that blew my mind about this script, honestly. Um, so this is the first script you've ever read. Yeah. And how did that treat you? It's it's pretty different from your average screenplay. Yeah. Uh, usually, you know, I I'd be I've gotten through all how many six seven of, no five of the Game of Thrones. So I mean, yeah. And, and I enjoy reading like lower and stuff like that. So it's uh it was interesting reading the narrator i guess the writer yeah as he's breaking down the actual scene so that kind of that was just pretty cool and different than yeah than listening to a or reading a character that's i mean yeah a lot of things with scripts like this like ones that never actually saw the light of day um because they're usually early drafts that you're reading there's a mm-hmm. lot more like lore and backstory in the script than you sure. would see in your average screenplay i gave maggie the star wars rough draft that yeah. george lucas did before he did the movie 
like every page is like a book almost. It's kind of insane. Yeah, I'd be interested in checking that out. Yeah, I mean, I, I can send that one your way too. Cool, but um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much you know about this movie that didn't happen. No, about um, uh, the movie, I don't know too much about. It. I actually did some background reading about it. Yeah, uh, just yeah, I gave you the option. Like, I told you you didn't have to, but about uh, like Ar- Aronofsky and what he uh, what he wanted to do, and then what happened, and yeah, and reading it myself, I could understand why it would have a hard time getting greenlit. Yeah, I mean, I was reading something earlier today, and literally the quote was, the studio rejected it because they wanted to be able to take their kids to it, and this movie was just too dark. That makes sense. Yeah. And if you know anything about Frank Miller, I mean, The Dark Knight Returns is Absolutely. obviously super dark in year one. Mm-hmm. A lot of his Batman writing, he basically creates a homicidal Batman almost. Yep. Um, All-Star Batman and Robin, mm-hmm. if you ever read that book, it's kind of famous because it has this one line that's kind of about Batman meeting Robin for the first time and has the line, are you retarded on the goddamn Batman? And it's him talking to Robin. That's like awesome. he basically the Robin in that version of the story is like Stockholm syndrome. Like mm-hmm. he basically breaks down this kid into like he has no choice but to join him. Well, I mean, that, that seems pretty realistic. You know, if uh, if you wanted to have some some teenager running around with you yeah you better break his ass down yeah so he's not and, constantly and that's the thing with frank miller questions and stuff so. yeah i mean he frank miller created year one which mm-hmm. created the dark batman that yep. we know today and he's actually gone on to say he kind of regrets it because like now that's how just all comics are and he's like yeah. man i kind of fucked up by taking all the joy out of it but um, i mean he's still doing it so. yeah not much you could do about that i mean you know it's hindsight he created a an amazing piece of work and then everyone's yeah. kind of piggybacking it so yeah. and, and year one is do? one of my favorite batman books i'm not like a huge fan i know it's kind of a blasphemous to say but i'm not a huge fan of the dark knight returns mm-hmm. i like it i actually kind of like the animated movie a little better because yeah. the way it kind of treats the material it. definitely um but it's just a little too dark and crazy for mm-hmm. my like year one is tame enough yeah um but the even this movie version is a lot darker than the book yeah and honestly, you see elements of year one in Batman Begins. Like year one ends with him being in the fucking burned out building right. and the police are like the main bad guys of the book. Right. And Batman Begins kind of takes that and just adds a villain into it. Like you got Ra's al Ghul, which there's exactly. no real villain in year one. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of the same thing with the script. There's no real villain. Well, it's like it's the city, basically. Yeah, I mean, it's the got, police. Well, Commissioner Loeb. Yeah, I guess Commissioner Loeb would kind of be the main villain. But right. the, and there's no real final encounter with Batman and a main villain. It's mm-hmm. Gordon and Loeb who end up coming down to it Definitely. at the end. Um, but some of the things j- just kind of stood out to me. I mean, this is not a Batman <laughs> that anyone has ever seen before. Right. Even coming from year one, it's totally different. Like, he's an orphan, mm-hmm. and he's just, like, his... They... Do they... I can't remember. Do they actually show his parents killed in the beginning? No. Or they, you know, they, they just kind of jump sequence. into it. Yeah, like, later on. Kind of like the Tim Burton movie they showed you later on. Exactly. I, I, was, I was blown away that, you know, he's, con- he's writing letters to his father yeah. that... Honestly, we don't even know. You, do, you know because you know Batman, but like the common viewer might be like, who the fuck is he talking to? Exactly. And I was, there were points when I was reading it and I thought to myself, I have it written down that, uh, you know, I, I, you know, he's got the mentor uh, with uh, little Al. I'm sure we'll get to him. <laughs> yeah. But um, uh, no other Batman uses the father as like a motivating fact. Well, what am I talking about? Well, I guess uh, as a motivating factor, as he's yeah. writing constant letters to him, and we never have this point of view from his from his father. And I don't know if his father would have wanted him to actually take revenge yeah. for him. And I think that's something they've touched on the, in the comics with mm-hmm. Alfred, kind of like you know, does your parents really want you for this? They want you to live a happy exactly. life and blah, blah blah. And like they give you a little motivation, like they give you a relationship with Batman, uh, Bruce and his father, and Batman Begins, right? But they really don't tell you anything about his parents in this script. Absolutely. And like, you don't like they, we know he's Bruce Wayne. Mm -hmm. They never, I mean, it's just like the whole point of the script is basically him coming back and becoming Bruce Wayne again. Because like the movie ends with him finally, because they keep talking throughout the movie of, oh, the missing Wayne boy. Exactly. And like, we all know it's Bruce Wayne. I don't know, like reading the script, if you, the average viewer would kind of pick up on mm-hmm. it. I mean, I guess he would because he gets the ring that has the TW. Is that what it is? Which is where the right. bat symbol comes from. I hated that. 
Uh, yeah, that was weird. But I will say, you didn't. You said you didn't see Batman v Superman. Uh, no, I, I saw it. it. I mean, you know, I, I watched the downloaded copy on my yeah. 13 inch monitor. I wasn't, you know, I'm working, so I didn't really pay that much attention. It's yeah. going to be on HBO soon, so I mean, I'm going to give it another legit go. Yeah, but uh, yeah, maybe I mean, don't watch the yeah, extended I didn't, version. I didn't really, I, w- I didn't throw myself into it as if I, I would have. Yeah. Well, one thing they do in the movie, which I wonder if they actually got from the script. I don't know if anyone even noticed or if it was just coincidence, is the branding thing. Like, mm-hmm. in the movie, he brands people. Yep. And honestly, in the movie, in, in Batman v Superman, I kind, like, when they first introduced it, I'm like, that's kind of a cool thing. Because, mm-hmm. like, you know, you're fucking, you're branding these prisoners and you're like, these are the fucking assholes. But then in, the, in Batman v Superman, they take it in a whole different direction of like, oh, people are getting killed because of this bat brand. It's like, you know, Batman wouldn't do that. Right. Because then he's leading to people's deaths and blah, blah, blah. Um, but th- I kind of like the idea that it, it reappears in this script. Mm-hmm. And I do wonder if there's a correlation between that and Batman v Superman. Right. But I mean, it's very different in Batman v Superman. Like, but the idea is the same. No, absolutely. I thought, uh, when when I read about him having that ring, you know that his yeah. father gave him. Fine, that that's cool. You know he's he's got uh, something that his father gave him that we of course never saw the uh, the passing yeah. of this heirloom. Yeah. You know, and try, try to try to keep the mic. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Your voice just keeps trailing it. No, out. my bad. Um, so, so the thing that I noticed in the um, well that I saw in the cartoon and the comic mm-hmm. was that one scene where he's in his uh, he's in his in his uh, mansion yeah and he's dying yeah after after like like uh, he goes out and he gets stabbed and then like some cop in the year one he gets stabbed and some cops take him and he ends up escaping Mm -hmm. back to his mansion he's laying there bleeding to death basically he's sitting in the chair he's looking at a bust of his father yeah and he's asking him what am i supposed to do yeah and he's got the bell right next to him and he says i could call alfred right now and this could all be over he could fix me up yeah but the the gift you've given me alfred yeah but what am i supposed to do and i i feel like that was such an iconic amazing scene yeah. in the cartoon in the comic book and you're just waiting and then in the comic you know the the fucking bat comes busts through, busting through the window through the window and it fucking and lands defined on the, batman yeah. forever it's amazing it, it lands on the bust and he looks at it you know he's like yes i know now what i'm supposed to do yeah and then you just hear the ding 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 which was like, created awesome. by frank miller there you go that's not in the script no it is not and i, <laughs> I was, was I was so disappointed because I wanted to see. I want to see that iconic scene. Yeah, in, in and a he movie. just kind of decides out of nowhere. Exactly, and you know, you got yourself this all-star director and Aaron Aronofsky, and I'm sure he could make it incredible. And yeah. it doesn't even have to be that different from the cartoon that I saw. No, and you know, they take it away by him just punching some dude in the head. Yeah, guy says like, I I have a bat thing on yeah my face it's like now. the news or something and, and he's like well he hears a news report that they say oh he's got like a bad icon from right. the ring and I, I just i feel like he he just looks at the at the tv and he probably smirks to himself he's like now i know what i'm now yeah. i'm the batman and i'm like and Fuck. it's i oh, come on yeah that was that was one of those moments that i literally was just kind of dropped i was reading on my ipad i kind of yeah. dropped i'm like what yeah, I mean, where is the symbolism? Batman is so much symbolism. This movie lacks a lo- would have lacked a lot of that. Yeah, it seems absolutely. Like, um, like the definitely seems like there's a lot more Gordon going on because Bat- Bruce Wayne, honestly, in this movie is a very silent character. Yep. Two other characters. There's a lot of voiceover. You can clearly tell it's written mm-hmm. by a comic very writer. Very brooding. Yes, very brooding. A ton of voiceover, but. Bruce barely actually speaks to anybody. Mm-hmm. It's usually Alfred speaking to him, or at Big Al, Little Al? Little Al. Little Al yeah. speaking to him, which we'll have to get to that soon. Sure. <laughs> um, and he just kind of like nods or just ignores him, mm-hmm. and there's just a lot of implied dialogue between the two. But right. he's like, when he's actually speaking to people, which he probably has the most lines with Catwoman, mm-hmm. it's like one or two things, like ever. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. I feel like... Um, if you had the right actor, you know, yeah. he, he would be Which able to they convey... Which were, they were looking at Christian Bale. Okay. Christian Bale kind of retained from this movie onto Batman Begins. Okay. All right. Well, that, that's fine. I mean, I've always been a fan of uh, Christian Bale as Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Um, hands down. You know, I mean, uh, 
I, me nitpicking about his Batman is I, is, is irrelevant. The, but, the Batman uh, voice shit, I could care less. Yeah, I, I think mean, those, you know, all those I, movies I are great. It. Yeah, if you're realistic, you want to hide your voice a little bit. Yeah, but uh, you know, and, even and course, even um, what's his name from the cartoon? Uh, fuck, blanking on his name. Uh, Kevin Conroy, yeah, who did yes. Batman in the animated series, his Bruce Wayne and his Batman had different exactly. voices, and uh, he should Michael Keaton. Did he really? Yeah, he was a little more like. I don't want to say flamboyant, but like airy with, as Bruce Wayne, a little yeah, more okay. light, whereas Batman would be brooding like this. That's Bruce would be true. like, hi, guys. How you doing? Yeah, like, uh, okay. But, but there was no like change in like... Not drastically, drums, you know? no. And, and yeah. Keaton did it, too. There was a yeah, slight Keaton, difference in Keaton Keaton's voice. Keaton did a little bit, yeah. too. But I enjoyed, uh, you know, I mean, it, as unrealistic as it, as it is, I enjoy hearing the uh, Michael Keaton speaking yeah. as, I guess, Bruce Wayne and Batman, the same guy. Yeah. So, that, you know, I, I always enjoyed that part of it. But, I mean, just looking at my notes, going back to the, uh, just a little blurb I wrote here, if his transformation is sparked by a ring, and then I add in uh, parentheses, bat brand, lame as fuck. Where is my breaking <laughs> through the glass? Yeah, so, there's just nothing. Yeah. It, it, like, I'm trying to rack my brain for any, like, What's that standout imagery in the movie? Mm-hmm. There's there's just like not a lot of anything that's very that true. stands out. And I understand that can be hard to convey on a page. That is the director's job. Exactly. That is the cinematographer's job. But I've read other scripts, mm-hmm. and there are definitely things that you can picture. They're like, oh, that would be an iconic scene. Yep. The, but in this, there's in, you know, his first draft, early draft maybe. I don't know mm-hmm. how many times he wrote this. I assume he was paid, wrote this, turned it in, and that was it. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, there's just – there's nothing that was saying out. I was like, oh, there's that moment, you know? Mm-hmm. I did feel like I was uh... – I was reading a comic book sometimes. Yeah. You know, it would have helped if there were, like, pictures in front of me. Yeah, which he's very descriptive in his screenplay. It's like, some people will be like, like, let's take a fight scene or whatever. Some people will, like, he details out some actual moves and stuff. Mm -hmm. Some people will just be like, oh, they fight, Batman gets the upper hand. Right. And it's up to the director or the choreographer to kind of do that. Yeah. Um, I do want to talk about... Because this kind of made me laugh. His bat suit. So uh, let's let's talk about his know. his suit and his equipment in general. Yeah. So he it, works in a garage. Like so. The, okay. Let's. I guess we have to start here. Okay. In this script, Bruce Wayne is an orphan who works at a garage with uh-huh. a little Al. Yep. Who is a small black man. I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, and he owns the garage, and right. somehow Bruce fell in with these people. We never really find out how. Absolutely. He's just been taking care of them on the street. Mm-hmm. He's really good with tools and as a mechanic, which yeah. fine that that checks out. Yeah. Um. And did he have some medical uh, knowledge? I remember that Batman. No, no, he did actually because Batman had. Uh, he, well, his father know, was he a had doctor. Scars on him, and and you know he was saying how you always mess yourself up when uh, when you stitch yourself. I oh do yeah, there they, was yeah a, they do a say that scene where he tried yeah. to help him. Yeah. So I I don't know how much. Uh, Background knowledge, you said his father was a doctor. Well, in the comic, I, I mean, it's Dr. Thomas Wayne has always been his father. Right. Um, but we... but no, no, you are right. That scene, I did forget about that scene. Okay. But as far as his training goes in this, it's all self-taught from the library. Yeah. Like, he, there's literally a scene where he goes and checks out a bunch of books. Right. And that's where he learns everything. I mean, that is, I guess, uh, realistic and... I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I, I thought Batman Begins Hamlet. I mean, he trains to become a ninja, whatever. Right. But... I mean, that's that Batman's always been a world traveler. Even in year one, it's like him coming back to the city is how it starts after traveling the world. That's um, the thing. I mean, he sheds all his wealth. Yeah. That's why. As he a has child. To, right. He has to go to the fucking library yeah. and, and get books on, on judo. And he puts together a bat suit out of stuff he just buys from a store. And then they just later say, oh, now he's got like an armored bat suit. No explanation I of. I couldn't picture it because no. the whole time I thought. There is I, some concept art out there for this movie. Okay. Very little. Right. Some concept art of the car, which is basically just a car he throws together in the garage. I mean, it sounds. I'm not going to lie. It sounds badass. It's, I mean, and the concept art was pretty Lincoln cool. Continental. Yeah. With, with the fucking. Uh, Very like old school 60s front. Batman. Right. It sounds pretty cool. Sweet. I yeah. Mean, and him busting through walls and putting chains on his car to rip doors off, which was... Yeah. When I read that, that sounded incredible. When he pulled the 180 <laughs> and fucking hits the door, a yeah. single door into the there's, bad There's some cool stuff with the car. But uh, going back to his... Uh, all of his gear, he sounded <laughs> like uh, Casey Jones on steroids. Yeah. There's literally... Okay, so this made me laugh. There's literally a moment where they say... 
his suit has hockey pads in it, yep. which just made me think of The Dark Knight, where yeah. he's like, I'm not wearing hockey pads. No, absolutely. And I just keep wondering, did these fuckers have the, like, were they making fun of this script when they made these future movies? That, that sounds about right. I mean, I mean, I, knowing that Bale went from one to the other, maybe mm-hmm. some stuff carried over. Definitely. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, um, who's the director? Uh, Christian, uh, Chris, Christopher, uh, Christopher Nolan. Nolan. He, I wouldn't be surprised if he had, like, uh, another script, that script as a reference, just going off a little bit, and yeah. then trying to pull <sighs> some I'm trying to remember when this was going to happen because Batman and Robin was 1997 Uh basically fucking killed the superhero movie for years until like Blade I think was the next one that brought it back and then X-Men and Spider-Man were like right there right and then Batman Begins I think was 2004 I can't confirm but I'm I'm, pretty sure I'm nodding for the Um, people (laughs) um, so I want to say this was probably early 2000s yeah, like that, 2000, that 2001, right. maybe because they were also working on a Batman and Superman movie for 2002, mm-hmm. I think. And then there was also a Justice League movie being made around. I have scripts for all these as right. well. These will be future episodes. Sure. Um, so I want to say that was all around the same time. Right. You know, it'd be it'd be real interesting to to see what would have happened with those movies. Yeah. Just because they didn't have as much CG as we yeah. do now so it would have been a l- more realistic and uh you know more intimate yeah because uh, i mean it was like those. star wars that kind of brought in these full cg movies mm-hmm. and i think episode two was the first one that was like this movie's almost entirely cg right. and that was like 2002 ah, you're probably you're probably right about that uh, but uh i was gonna say about the hockey pads <laughs> um i've been playing hockey for over like 20 years yeah and no fucking way. <laughs> Am, like, just some knee pads, some elbow pads. It's so, really laughable. Protector. Yeah, it sounds laughable. Because if someone's coming at me with a knife, I better have fucking memorized those books that I got at the library. Yeah. So I protect the, myself from yeah. dying. And there's a lot of... They, they describe him as almost like a Frankenstein's monster at some point. That he's been just beat up so much. Yeah, absolutely. Because it seems like it's like an every night thing for him. Like, as soon as he kind of starts going out, it's just that's what he's doing. There's yeah. a huge chunk of the movie where we don't see little Al at all. Right. Until he, he's, like, stitching himself up in that scene you were mentioning. Right. And he comes back and just, is like, immediately okay with whatever he's doing. Doesn't really try to talk him out of it or anything. And is just willing to help him. I think he gives him, like, one of these... Uh, one one of these speeches where it's it's kind of like you you do you I, yeah. I know you you have to go out and uh, and I, I guess be yourself and and find your own peace yeah but it you know I it's, know it's little not Al wasn't that a, different from how Michael Caine is in like the first two yeah or, or like in the first one like Michael Caine and obviously in the in Dark Knight Rises is at the point where like you need to fucking stop like right. this is getting ridiculous. But in Batman Begins, he's kind of like, yeah, you know, you might be an idiot, but you got to do what you got to do. Oh, shit. He's enjoying himself in Batman yeah. Begins. He's Even in the, the Dark Knight a little bit. He's on the fucking boat with the Russian ballerinas, yeah. you know, just having a good time. That was, that was Dark Knight. That was Dark Knight? Oh, yeah, what, the boat, because that's when he leaves to go to China. What, what were you talking about then? Well, in the, in the first two. Okay. It is the first yeah, two. Then, he's yeah, a little more into it. Yeah, no, no, no. I moved it around. Well, he tells him to fill up the roles. Make yeah. Make sure you just fill up the roles. Because technically everything was in his name because exactly. he was dead or whatever. So, yeah, and he, you know, he's got to bring him back from the dead. So yeah. All kinds of BS. But listen, Alfred sounded for a little bit. Alfred got a kick out of what was going on. Yeah. You know, he and well, he was living the life of luxury while yeah. Bruce is out fucking with Ra's al Ghul. Getting, yeah, and they, they, they toss some jokes back and forth, yep. which is something this movie is completely void of. There, there is no, no fucking like how everyone talked about Man of Steel and Batman v Superman right. as very serious movies. Mm-hmm. The, this movie would have been yeah. dour. I, I feel like if if there were any jokes, it must have come from like the pimp or uh, yeah. or. I, I don't even like know, even, like Flass, maybe, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, even reading it, like, I can't think of anything that, oh, maybe an actor could have made this funny. Right. Like, maybe there's something that might play serious on the page, but the way they deliver it, like, this thing reads so serious. Absolutely. And, uh, and yeah, the main villains are, like, pimps and cops, so... Nah, you know, another thing that I thought was uh, going with the darkness, the dream sequence, where uh, he was dreaming. Dreaming, of course. <laughs> and, uh... I wrote down that the dream sequence is great, especially the blood that splatters across young Bruce's face. I thought it was I'm a, trying it was to remember a really the dream sequence, visceral um, feeling that it gave me. I, what, what was the dream sequence? I'm trying. Well, it's been a few know, days he, since I read right, this. No, so. For me too. Yeah. Um, 
the dream sequence, I mean, he's just asleep and uh, he's walking out of out of the theater that we all know. He oh, sees yeah, Zorro that's kind of where they that's like halfway through the movie where they kind of finally show you. Exactly. The death of his yeah, parents. they okay, show you yeah. a bit of an origin, which, man, they totally kind of ripped that off for Batman v Superman, too. Yep. There's a fucking dream sequence where he's at their sarcophaguses or whatever, mm-hmm. and the fucking blood comes gushing out of it or whatever. Yeah, I again, I could I don't recall all that because I was just kind of fucking doing my thing yeah, while it was on. I mean, on. it's not a very good movie. No, nah, I hear you. I mean, yeah, that's how most people feel. I really I want to watch it and I don't know. Uh I mean, I watched it 3 times. I okay, I watched well, it. I watched go. we put it on here. Chris uh-huh. was watching it. We didn't make it through the second time. Right. We were halfway through and Chris was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, he turned Chris it off. Yeah, Chris came back. He was like, "This is this movie fucking sucks." Yeah, so. and then I watched the extended version, which I think Wow made some things better some things worse okay um let's uh what what did you think of gordon i liked gordon yeah man that guy was depressing huh? yeah which gordon in the year one book is a little depressing as well but right. he takes a stand and he i feel like it happens a lot earlier in the book than it does in the script Mm -hmm. like the script is literally like the last 10 pages it's like the confrontation with Loeb, which is kind of anticlimactic right this thing just fucking ends Mm -hmm. and like the last kind of encounter is a little bit of nothing yeah i don't recall the ending so much which i mean it's really the building they burn out the building okay and batman fucks up some dudes in there and escapes through the sewers and then it cuts to gordon like Loeb is taking his family and yeah, Gordon it takes runs. his wife. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it takes his wife and Batman who doesn't have any of his gear on anymore, I guess. Yeah. Gordon straight up. Oh, he, uh, he, so he has no, he his helmet or whatever gets mm-hmm. knocked off. And does Gordon kill Loeb then? Is that um, how it ended? Well, I, I recall. No, I think it was Batman that took a knife and oh, he, like, threw, hit him it in the him, eye. threw him in the, uh, hit him in the eye. Yeah. And then, you know, the guy goes down um, I'm pretty sure he still lived. I think so. I, I don't think they even like clarify. Right. The well, only- no, they do say there is a, like a newscast afterwards uh-huh. where they say that um, all these cops are getting arrested and that Loeb is said to be at the head of it. So I guess there's some implication there that he's still alive. Which if yeah, Bruce straight up has no mask during that scene. So I guess Loeb could have seen his face. But that, I mean, yeah, that's true. Uh, they don't really cover that. Eye, so yeah, that doesn't help. But yeah, I, I remember... but Gordon says he can't see him because he doesn't have his glasses. Yeah, I'm blind so he's like, my yeah. glasses. So, yeah, I mean, you know, that's a that's a wink to actually I believe that definitely happened in the cartoon. And yeah. I don't know if it happened in the in the comic. I, I don't, don't believe that. it. I don't think but it did. in the cartoon. I remember that it wasn't even it wasn't even Loeb. It was some. Mob the, bosses, the, the son? cops like Loeb. I don't even know if is really he's a minor character in the comic. Right. It's mostly is it Flass is the other cop. Uh-huh. It's mostly Gordon and Flass kind of butting heads, right? And Loeb is just implied like you know he's sided with Flass and mm-hmm. kind of tells Gordon to sweep it under the rug. There's a lot more Loeb. They make Loeb the main bad guy in the movie, right. which was not the case in the book because in the book it was just about dirty cops and the mob. Mm-hmm. There's like no mob stuff in this script. They I had mean, the mayor stuff. Yeah, it's because Gordon goes to the mayor right. and he's trying to start an investigation, and the mayor mayor's goes to with Loeb. yeah goes yeah. to Loeb, and yeah, that's kind of there's a there's no real mob stuff in the in the movie because in the book I'm try, I can't even remember if it's Maroney who's like the main mob guy in the books for yeah, a long no, time. No, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, it's like Batman crashes their dinner party right. type situation, right. which is another iconic moment from mm-hmm. the book that was completely missing from the movie. In the book and in the cartoon it was. Yeah fucking awesome because he breaks in he's got smoke yeah everyone's freaking out lights are off and then he gives this awesome uh you know yeah he gives him like a city he now. likes uh, not like a speech but right. a warning mm-hmm. absolutely yeah and uh i mean i, I know we're kind of jumping around here but getting back to the ending of the cartoon when bruce jumps off the bridge to yes to catch uh his son or uh what's his um uh, Gordon's son, his yeah. uh, infant son. And then I, I guess, I don't know, I guess he hits the water and then uh, he, he pulls his son out and, yeah. then, and then he tells I, him, I and then he remember. tells him, he's like, yeah, uh, I can't see without my glasses. And then they give okay, a yeah. handshake thing and then they have mutual respect for one another. Yeah. But um, I tell you, there, there's just, there's so much uh, with Gordon uh, in the, in the comic and in the cartoon, his narration in his own head. Yeah. He's speaking. 
And Which there's a little Gordon narration in the script. Not much. Right, it's, not there's much. There's so much Batman narration. Yeah. But a little Gordon narration. So much so that, like, when it happened, I was like, oh, there's actually two narrators here. It's kind of weird. Just because they hadn't really done it before. It's like three-fourths of the way through the script, you finally get a little bit of Gordon's thoughts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that stood out huge for me was that uh, Gordon turns out to be suicidal. Yeah. Yeah, in in, in this movie, which, I mean... They've, uh, they've definitely taken Gordon to dark places in the books, but never, like, yeah. suicidal I mean, that I got, remember. He's got the gun in his mouth. Yeah, literally. In the bathroom, it's like the he... Lethal Weapon with Martin Riggs, like, yeah. sitting there with a gun in his mouth and a bullet in it. And just like, yeah, and that then happens like the multiple only thing times. That stopped, well, I'm sure he wouldn't have pulled the trigger, but his wife is at the door, knocks yeah. on the door. He's like, hey, and, are you okay? Yeah. And then boom, he's like, oh, shit. oh yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. He just puts he pulls it away. the gun out of his mouth and he's like, yeah, yeah honey, is dinner ready? Yeah. yeah. You know? it, it just life goes on. Yeah. I mean, because in year one, it's Gordon coming to like he transfers to Gotham mm-hmm. and is like, I know this place is a shithole and I kind of want to make it better. Right. And at first he has to kind of play ball. And then that's he gets he gets jumped by the other cops, which happens in yep. the book. And then he in the book, he immediately goes after them to show that he's not yep. fucking scared. And he beats that guy's ass. And that doesn't happen until like the end of the movie. There's like a huge gap of time in between those encounters in the movie. And to me, it kind of made Gordon look like a pussy. No, like, absolutely. I mean, one of the awesome things about the uh, the comic and the and the cartoon was the monologue about him discussing or him having that thoughts in his head that Flash is a green beret. Yeah. I mean, he they go through it a little bit, a little. But uh, he's like, I got to watch myself. He throws him the bat. He gives yeah, him his own, he which gives they him, do in the script as well. Right, they do right. do the so, thing where he gives him the bat. I mean, I think a lot of things in the movie could have turned out really fucking awesome. Um, yeah. For the general public, I feel like it wouldn't be great for them. For someone like myself, yourself, yeah. where, where we get such a different, dark version of this, it would it would be awesome. I mean, just a, a different view of Batman. And, I mean, reading it, I felt like that a lot of... I felt like there was a poor flow to the to the scenes, jumping back yeah. and forth. because it, it feels like a comic book. Exactly. Like, that's the thing. But maybe He's, that's me. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, no, I felt that mm-hmm. way. It was actually kind of hard to get through this one. Cause like, right. I, so at the same time, I've been reading Kevin Smith's Superman script. Okay. And it reads like a movie. Like, it's I'm burning through pages. This one was kind of a drag to get through. On top of it being super fucking depressing right. at all times. Like, when you picture dark in this movie, I'm picturing almost pitch fucking black. Right. And it's it was just kind of hard to get through. Like, I remember fin- I finished it late at night, and I was just like, man, I'm fucking glad to be done reading it. <laughs> No, I agree with you. I mean, but like I read year one, the comic like once a year. Right. I mean, it was the first script I read. And yes, I felt like I I wrote here feels like scenes were jumping too much. Don't like the flow. Poor flow. I I, I mean, scenes will jump in a in a script like you can get you can definitely people will handle it differently. Of course. Um, It kind of depends on the movie, but definitely you because I'm trying to think of what I was reading recently that. Scenes will jump in a movie, yeah. but it's it's what's happening in those scenes. Absolutely. There's a lot of points in this movie that feels a little drawn out, mm-hmm. and not a lot is happening, and it takes a while to get to like kind of the good Batman right. stuff, and you're just kind of left wanting. Um, I want to talk about medical Batman at some point with like the syringes and stuff. Um, uh, no, go go on. I'm not even sure where you're going with it. So, uh, th- just um, Batman's gadgets in uh-huh. this. It's I don't know if you notice. It's a lot more like, uh, me- me- the- it's described as being medical based. Okay, because he's using syringes filled with shit on people. I recall that. Yeah. yeah, like I can't remember what he gives people, but it's a lot of like beating the shit out of someone and then injecting them with something to get them to talk or whatever, like true serum and shit yeah, like that. Yeah, he sounds like. Uh... I don't know, like a because real... it's, it's all it's supposed to be building on that stuff he learned from the library. Of course, yeah, he, yeah. And I re- I remember that he checked out the anarchist cookbook, which yeah. I mean, if you, it, I could see a scene <laughs> where he's you know at, at the at the teller or uh, at the whoever the fuck the book at the lady store is, clerk the or whatever store, yeah or the, the, librarian. the librarian. There you go. When he's checking it out and the camera like zooms in, yeah. passing through, and then boom, and she this even is gives him cookbook. yeah. She actually gets freaked out by him and gives him the books for free. Right. It's like you know what? Just bring them back when you're done. Yeah. And I mean, I guess there, there's your little bit of comedy. There's your tiny yeah. Bit, I guess you know, yeah. With, and I guess that's the director winking at you that that's saying like yeah, this guy is 
fucking crazy. Yeah, and he sounds like a fucking sociopath. Like, Absolutely. as you're reading this, like, the way he just kind of, like, to people, like, he doesn't really answer anybody. No, he doesn't. But then when he's Batman, it's, like, one-liners and fucking kind of little quips towards dudes. And it's, this guy sounds like a fucking maniac. No, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I, I couldn't imagine. I don't know. I mean, I don't yeah. know what. Obviously, his parents dying in such a horrific way directly yeah. in front of him. But, uh, you know. But they don't even really touch on that affecting him. Like, you, like I said, you don't even get the clarification that he is Bruce Wayne until the end. Like, we know because we know who the fuck Batman is. But it's the, it's him writing to his father, never mentioning his mother, never mentioning what happened to them. Right. Like, you don't get the sense that this affected him at all, and this is why he's doing this. Yeah, as someone that is just walking into the movie, they're like, who is this fucking crazy guy? Yeah, why is he doing why, this? What is why, he... Who is he writing these letters to? What does it mean? I mean, well, you know, he, he's writing them to his father. I don't know where he's putting these fucking letters. I don't know who's well, sending well, he them He burns to. them at the end. Right. Like, he's putting them in a box. He's I think they say he box. puts them in a box. He writes them, seals them, puts them in a box, and at the end, he burns the box. Yeah. And that's when they reveal that he's like, oh, they're living in the mansion now. And little Al's like, look at this place. It's so big. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I recall that. I, I got a, I, I got a chuckle out of that, you know, when yeah. he comes in and, you know, Bruce finally has the, he's able to muster up like a smirk just at Alfred. Yeah. And then I could see, you know, fucking boom credits after a smirk. And yeah, it like, literally just what, ends what like this? there. You know, uh, it it blows my mind. Uh, a lot of a lot of this movie, I get it. I understand yeah. why this wasn't made. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I really see it after reading the script. But it would be fucking awesome to it, to see it. Everybody's just like, oh, I'll just do it different. And this is fucking different. Like, if you different. want different, this is the fucking Batman story for you. But it's like it's different, but it's the same, and it's the same by the guy who made it different, which is the thing that kind of it's hard to wrap my mind around. Because, yeah, Frank Miller's the fucking guy. He wrote Year One. Uh-huh. He wrote all this shit and changed Batman forever. And then he made this. And it's, yeah, it's got the elements of his story, but it's just all over the place. Tell me, is this uh, Frank Miller's first attempt at a I script? I believe it is. Okay. I think it is. Because I'm. And this could potentially be like what? Because I want to say, didn't draft? he help direct and write Sin City? Well, yeah, I know. It, he was, was involved. To you by, like, or... I want to say he direct, and I think he directed the spirit. Yeah, and that's why I that movie. Tr- that, that's yeah. it's I, interesting. I yeah. It's interesting. I would recommend watching it, but okay. just know going in that it's fucking weird. Right. Um, that's one of those ones I kind of want to revisit. It's yeah. got it's got some charm. It's like to it. Dick Tracy running across. Uh... It's like Dick Tracy meets Sin City is a very good right. way to because for there's no reason at all why it needs to be like Sin City. I think it's just one of those things where Sin City was successful because of the look and blah blah blah. Let's do the spirit that way, and it just does not justify it. Mm-hmm. And Samuel L. Jackson just plays the weirdest fucking villain. I mean, what what do you expect? He, yeah, he's, there's he's just the this best. scene where he's like looking at this petri dish of shit, or like he clones something, and it's just fucking this little hand thing or whatever. <laughs> he's like, "That's just plain damn weird." Hey, look at this! Isn't this just plain damn weird? It just keeps like repeating it. Oh, it's, this is Samuel. Yeah. Okay. Well, to, I mean, and Scarlett Johansson's like his right hand woman or whatever. Right. Well, I mean, it's that's... it's a weird fucking movie. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Frank Miller directed that. And I want to say he had to do with something to do with Sin City, but this might have been his first movie that he like wrote. No, absolutely. Um, getting back to uh, how crazy. I wish I had the the actual fucking writing in front of me. But um, when Gordon goes to uh, the head doctor at Arkham, yeah, they do and, go to Arkham, and he gives him he the doctor finally gives a legit. Like a psychoanalysis on yeah. Batman, and how he's just because yeah. At this point, stop. Gordon is he at one point becomes like a hero cop because mm-hmm. from the scene from the book where the guy is like holding someone hostage and he goes in and stops it, and then he becomes the hero cop and they don't want him to be the hero cop, so they put him on this fucking Batman case, and that's when yeah he goes to Arkham to try to f- see if he can find out just who the fuck anything he can learn to help him catch this guy. Like from a psychoanalytic no, point of view. No, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. He tells him this guy's never going to stop. No. Yeah. The things that happened in his life, it doesn't sound like he's not after anything that is uh, tangible. No. You know, it's it's something that's in his head and there's nothing. He's going to never stop. He's the most driven fucking character yeah. in all of fucking comics. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is what's coming from. Well, you know, I don't know what I'm looking at right now. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it's it's just that's what makes him. Batman, and I, I do think that uh, they 
they did that well in in this movie. They show how driven he is. Yeah, I mean, my problem is they just don't justify it. Like because of the true. parents thing, we don't know that it's because of his parents. We don't know what his. I mean, you never know what Batman's goal is. His goal is to just do this forever until right. the day he dies. Um, but yeah, there's just no justification for why. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And they give you very small hints of it. Like, you know, his fan, you know who he is, you know, his family died, blah, blah, blah. But they, they never, they never tie A to B. Oh, well, besides the dream sequence. Yeah. Which comes in very late in the movie. Right. And, and, and it's not, I mean, it's not very long. No. So and it, it doesn't specifically state like, mm-hmm. and like you said, the, the scene with the bat and the window and the bus, right. like that the was the thing. That's the fucking moment where like batman is born absolutely and in this it's like oh i left a bat symbol on that guy's head i guess i'm gonna do a bat now (laughs) yeah like batman begins justified it perfectly like he sees the bat and like he's just like i know what i have to do i have to make my enemies afraid of terror yeah i'm gonna make them afraid of what i'm afraid of like they 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 do it right absolutely yeah i mean the uh the batman begins did it pretty well yeah, they, they obviously they don't give you that iconic scene. No, but, but they they handle it well. Absolutely, and this just doesn't really handle it. You know, I thought um, I thought Bru- uh, Batman's fighting style was was really awesome. When I uh, yeah, and it sounds it, brutal. Yeah, th- absolutely. I which wrote is here, in Batman v Superman, like the only good part of that movie is Batman just fucks guys up no absolutely there's a there's a warehouse scene i don't think it's the um the initial one where he's trapped in there but there no. is there a warehouse scene there, that he's going through i definitely remember a warehouse scene okay because um, the the scene at the end is is just kind of like a projects building that they firebomb right that i he's, remember yeah he's just beating up cops in there which is pretty much taken right from the book it felt like i don't know if you've seen the raid yeah. But, um, oh, yeah. That's what it felt like to me. It it feels like Batman almost has like this uh, Tony Jaw type. Yeah, fighting style he just like kind of pops out of the shadows and just destroys and, people and fucking knocking like, teeth. The off. way some of the some of the way he dispatches people was described. It almost mm-hmm. sounded like they were described as a murder. Yeah. But you're just you know like oh okay he's still alive. Absolutely. But that's the thing. He broke someone's fucking uh, yeah. trachea. Yeah, and, and he had the guy's not breathing. Then he throws. He had to give him a tracheotomy. It was well, a yeah, fucking but, knife. Yeah, he just he fucking like stabs him in the throat. Something. Yeah, oh, and then that's a, it. Said it in the script: instant tracheotomy. I was yeah. like, holy fuck! Like this dude's insane. I was like, that that is the coolest fucking. And that was the most I've ever seen. That was the most Frank Miller fucking thing for me. Yeah. Like that that definitely brought up memories of like Dark Knight Returns. Like Batman's pretty fucking brutal in those. Absolutely, you know uh, when also when Gordon was in the. Uh, in the hospital, we got a small Joker nod. I thought yeah. that was pretty sweet. Yeah, but uh, it I felt mean, a little it, pandering to me. No, but I, I mean, it's, it's they gone. give you something. It's yeah, that, uh, yeah. A it, pale it, man with green hair gets wheeled by. Yeah, and that's it. That's all you get. Which it's great. I yeah, mean, that's fine. I and I think there's a few the moments like that. I'm trying, I can't. None of them are really coming. But I feel like there was definitely a few moments throughout the script mm-hmm. that they kind of hint at the bigger Batman world to come. Yeah. Um, if there was to be a sequel. Yeah. I mean, hopefully he gets uh, more than a fucking hockey pads and uh, and, a, and a fucking goalie mask that he's wearing. Yeah, which, I mean, the concept art of the final suit does resemble kind of Michael Keaton a okay. little bit. I want to say, I could be wrong. It might be closer to the gray from the year one comic, because okay. I, I, I can picture the car concept art. I can't quite picture the suit concept art, but that is out there. No, absolutely. Um, I mean, we've come this far. We haven't even talked about Catwoman yet. Yeah, you know, I... Uh... I had a little bit written here, and I have a little blurb. I mean, uh, please. Uh, give, I mean, me there's me there's not a ton to say about her. She's kind of a minor character. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, there's definitely different interpretations of Catwoman in the comics. This one, they flat out say she's black. That, that, I she, like that, actually. Yeah. And I'm, I want to say in, excuse me, in year one, she looks black, but it's yeah, kind of like nondescript. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I know she's black. I'm yeah. looking at and the in, picture. And in, in different, um, I don't know if they've really touched on her. Nat- I mean, I'm sure they have her nationally. Because I know in the comics she ends up being the son of some mob, or not the son, the daughter uh-huh. of some, one of the mob guys. Like, not Maroney, but maybe maybe Maroney. One of the mob guys, uh-huh. or Roman, the Roman, the guy right. they call the Roman. Um, so she's probably got some Italian in her or something. Mm-hmm. Um Black Italian. Yeah. Nice. I mean, whatever she is. But in the, she was in Frank Miller. She was a prostitute. Yep. Um, and she is. In, yes. A dominatrix. And mm. she is in this as well. 
I want to say maybe because they never really say she's Catwoman in year one. I'm pretty sure. Like I, I think maybe in the movie, the animated movie, they they kind of flat out say it. I want to say in the comic book, it might have been a little more open. It's been mm-hmm. a while since I've read it. Um, and I think they kind of just distance that. Like that's not Catwoman. This is Catwoman when right. they continue the comics. Um, but yeah, and this she's just a black dominatrix. She has a buddy. Who right. that when they did Selena Kyle in The Dark Knight Rises, she had a buddy, right. and in other forms of the comics, she had a buddy. She's always got so a buddy. some She's little blonde girl, yeah. And yeah, she, I mean, she doesn't do much in the script. She dis- she's kind of in and out at different points. Mm-hmm. Um, d- she kind of pops up during one action scene. She's breaking into a uh, some mob guy's house. Yeah, that was at the end, right? Well, the, the end is when she's, like, full Catwoman. Right. Like, she's in a suit. And yeah, she's breaking into somebody's house. But there's a scene in the middle where she's... Right. Yeah. Yeah, she's... Because uh, no. Batman, like, catches her and, like, helps her. And then he's like, yeah, you're going to jail. And then that, she escapes. That scene was uh, the mayor uh, didn't enjoy the prostitutes that... Um, That's right. He, he's got a certain taste yeah. when it comes to his prostitutes. And uh, I think it was uh, Loeb picked up... Uh, Selena Kyle. That's right. In the car, and she's like in the in. room, and there's like a ton of guys in the other room, and right. she's starting to rob the place. I don't understand how you uh, just leave. You know, uh, listen. Not, I'm sure there are lots of prostitutes out there with hearts <laughs> of gold. Yeah, and fucking, I could trust you with my life. Yeah, but I'm not going to leave her. But in, my but in the dirtiest legal, city of all, right, in like the mayor's she, house, she gets the silk bag from the pillowcase. Yeah, just starts fucking pouring shit clumsily in there. pouring, and right. she gets caught almost immediately. Absolutely, it, it, you know. I mean, I it was funny to me just reading it. I know it wasn't meant to be funny, but uh, you know, I I got a kick out of it. I, I thought the these the mayor and and commissioner Loeb do not seem very on top of their shit. No. I mean they they just let things go over their heads yeah. or they think they're so above everything. And that, I think that's a lot of it. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, you know, they they've been running the fucking city and the police for God knows how long. Yeah, they probably. I mean, they said Batman's not a big deal. Fuck him. Who cares? Yeah, put the fucking Gordon on this case that exactly. nobody really cares about. And then once Batman starts fucking up their shit, it's like, yo, Gordon, what do you got? Right. Like, we need to get this guy. Yeah. And <laughs> I thought, yeah, that's pretty great. I enjoyed that part. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to th- like, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, I know that. I mean, I'm just looking at a few things. Uh, it says that one thing that Gordon, I guess was uh grew up well not grew up but he's been in gotham for a long time and he's been trying to get out of gotham yeah with his, which is with kind of the wife. opposite in the comics right he, he comes into gotham right to clean it up yeah he's a super cop from his previous precinct. yeah so i thought that was pretty but interesting I, then it's like his wife gets pregnant and then she then he wants out i think right because like he wants to protect his wife but by that point he's already so much in the shit yeah and he's suicidal so i don't know how much yeah i mean does how much does he want to get out? You yeah. Know? Really, like, just check really out. out. Yeah, I mean, fuck and, it. and Gordon in the comics has always gone through different things. We're like, oh, it, like, I'm pretty sure in year one he has an affair. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. He's got a, uh, because they put him with uh, Some, uh, an attractive partner. Yeah. And, you know, uh, two and then cops she ends up, beat. And I think his wife ends up leaving him in the comics at uh-huh. some point. Like, in different versions of the comics, she leaves or she dies or they're right. still together. Like, Gordon, he's always had his vices. Yeah. And the smoking always plays a big part as well. Yeah. Uh, hold on. I got something here. It just fucking left. <laughs> I'm looking at uh, yeah, some that's, concept that's art. That's the concept art. And, uh, I mean, yeah, it looks like, I guess, yeah, year it one. definitely uh, looks like year gray one. Gray with, uh, with, I mean, he's got like the, the ears that are really though. fucking weird. Yeah. Oh, I guess there's some Selena Kyle concept art, too. Yeah. How's that look? I mean, you know, looks like a cat suit with like a weird... Maybe like a weird Egyptian style headdress. Yeah, she looks good. She's a cutie. Uh, you know, Gordon. He's your typical uh, trench. Uh, uh, yeah, you I know, mean, Gordon coat. has always looked like Gordon. I mean, yeah. did you see the picture of J.K. Simmons they put out? Because he's doing Gordon in the Justice League. J.K. Simmons. Oh, uh, yeah, that makes that's a good. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. He he looks good. They put out a yeah. picture. He looks good. So we were uh, we were talking about who we thought we might cast for. I yeah, mean, who, who would. Uh, you want me to go first? I mean, you can go first. I honestly didn't put like a oh, ton of thought on this. I didn't. I mean, me neither. I mean, the first one that came to my mind, I don't even know the guy's name, which is terrible. <laughs> but uh, he is in Avatar. He's the main bad guy uh, with the flat top. Looks like Guile. Oh, you the know? Colonel Quatrich, I think his name is in Avatar. Like I, I can't. Yeah, I don't. I know the guy. Right, I don't. He was in that uh, that 
Fox show. The thing is, that's an older guy. Um, This technically would be young Batman. Oh, yeah. Because there, I I want to say there was a point. (laughs) I want to say at one point there was going to be a Dark Knight Returns movie, and Uh there was talk about Clint Eastwood playing him. Yeah, but I'm I'm not sure how 100 percent that is. I mean, maybe that that was when they were going to do just because when they were going to do Justice League, it was Army Hammer. Who went on to do Lone Ranger? Right, right. And he was no, in the Facebook I, I, movie. I know the guy. I don't. He would be Gordon. No, he was going to do Batman when they were going to do ju- when George Miller, the Mad Max uh-huh. director, was going to do Justice League. They were going to do Justice League Mortal. Yeah. And they had a whole cast. They had a script, and I have the script. Uh huh. And I, I don't know what happened. The movie got shut down. The, the same guy who did the documentary on the Kevin Smith movie, he's working on a documentary for the Justice League movie as we speak. Gotcha. I mean, yeah, I, I'm not. Uh, I mean, Army Hammer. I'm I'm down with that dude. How are you? I I all I've seen is uh, what Lone Ranger and the name Army fucking Hammer. I mean, I mean, listen, I haven't. That's that's his deal. But um, I I don't know. He seems a bit too clean for me to be a little uh, bit to be Bruce. I, I mean, mean, in this version, it would not have worked. Right. <laughs> but right. uh, like in, even in Batman Begins, um. Christian Bale, he's a, he's a clean guy. Oh, totally. Even when he's in the dirt, he still looks like a fucking handsome devil. No, nah, you're absolutely right about that. Uh, now, who would you have picked for your Batman? For my for Batman for this? Yeah, for this. Um, fuck. Like off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of somebody who's like in like two thousands. Well, yeah, fuck the two thousands. I'm talking just, like yeah, current just right now. Yeah, you're how mm. it would have. I'll I'll give you mine, and then as you yeah. think about it, I think uh, Jake Gyllenhaal would have been pretty great. I would totally um, see a Jake Gyllenhaal Batman movie. Definitely, um, Jake Gyllenhaal is one of those guys that feel like catches so much shit. I think he's really? a fucking. F- I think I I always feel like I hear people shit talking Jake Gyllenhaal. Okay, I think he's fucking phenomenal. No, I think he's great too. And if you haven't seen Nightcrawler, that's one of the best. That, movies I was just I've about ever seen. to say, you know, just based off Nightcrawler, you know, he's uh, he's a little bit he's more so gangly, fucking, yeah, and he's. You know, he's, he's so a creepy, creepy in fucking that movie. guy, and I feel like you put a little bit of muscle on. Look at him Jake. in like Southpaw. Yeah, like uh, that that version yeah. of Jake Gyllenhaal. I could South see as Batman. Yeah, that's what I said, right? Southpaw. Southpaw. South. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, that's my bad. I heard it wrong. <laughs> no, Southpaw, the boxing movie. <laughs> right. That he did. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's got that. some muscle in that. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, you want a square jaw, kind of? Yeah. Because I mean. You're gonna see the fucking jaw. That's like all you. That's like when everybody was so pissed off about Ben Affleck. I'm like, I think he's and he was the best part of that movie. Yeah, fucking. I have no problem with Ben Affleck. No, as, he's uh, great as an older, uh, grungier Batman. Um, I thought he, you know, he's pretty good. Like for some reason, my mind keeps jumping to Jeremy Renner, but I think he's too pretty boy. Jeremy Renner for Hawkeye oh, from yeah. Avengers. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a big fan of him. I feel like he plays. He's perfect as. As the army guy in her yeah. locker, he was fucking awesome. Did you see the town? Uh, no, I didn't see the you town. Should, first of all, you should see the fucking town. That all movie's right, amazing. Try, I lent Chris that. my Blu-ray. Yeah. Maybe you can get it back from him. Yeah. I lent it to him like a year ago. He still hasn't watched it. Yeah. You should just fucking grab it from him and well, watch Chris it. Chris is a busy man. But yeah. yeah, no, well. definitely. I uh, No, I'll get on that. I, I hear very good things. That's with Affleck and his yeah, brother, Aff- right? Affleck. Is his brother in it? I don't remember if his brother in it. Jeremy Renner's in it, Affleck's in it, and um, I think that was mine. And uh, what's his name from uh, Mad Men? Um, John Hamm. John Hamm's in Yeah. It? He's like the the FBI agent tracking him down. Okay. And that makes uh, sense. what's her name? The girl from Weeds who's kind of in everything now. Uh, the attractive main actress. Yeah. She's, she's like the main actress in okay. that movie. Yeah. Uh, hey, listen. You just named a bunch of great actors. And yeah. I hear it's very good. Uh, it got nominated for a shit ton of awards, didn't it? I don't remember if it got nominated. It, if it did, well, I wouldn't have complained. Yeah. yeah. I mean, his next Argo did. So yeah. Ben Affleck's a fucking great filmmaker. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good. Man, honestly, I'm having trouble thinking of who I... Did you have any casting ideas for any other character like uh, Selena uh, Kyle? Or, well, I mean, I didn't even think about this, but uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is that... Is that one black chick from, uh, what is it that uh, the new uh, Avengers movie, Civil War? She's uh, she's hanging out with uh, Black Panther. Oh she, she yeah, has, like, what, one line? Yeah, she says like one thing. She's just like, don't yeah. fuck with me. Yeah. I mean, she is what? I mean, I know that in the in the script she's supposed to be five nine. Yeah, like, uh, she looks a little taller. Fifteen or something. Yeah, this woman is like six <laughs> one. She's like. But I mean, that WBA that honestly wouldn't matter. But she's she's like gangly though. Like you'd want a right. cat person to no, be. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, quietly. Yeah. Going through the. Night. I could I could see her. 
Yeah. You know who I'm talking about, though, right? Yeah, I know who you're talking about, and I've heard that she's kind of becoming a big thing now. Uh-huh. I just I don't know her name. Yeah, I, no, that's I the first time I've either. seen her, and Absolutely. like you said, she has one line, so it didn't really jump out to me as somebody I should remember. Totally. Except for how she looked. Yeah. And she's just huge, and I, I guarantee you she's going to be in that uh, in the new Black Panther movie. Yeah, with, uh, I'm pretty sure she's a character from the comics, so I yeah. assume in the Black Panther movie she'll probably have more to do. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know much about Black Panther, so uh, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Other I know than the man's he was rich. fucking awesome in that movie. I know he's rich, and he's uh, basically Black Batman with yeah, uh, kinda. not the uh, dead family. You know who actually could have been a good choice is the guy who plays Daredevil. Matthew Cox. Uh huh. I could see him as Batman. Yeah, that's not. Although bad. he doesn't sound that tough. Like even in Daredevil, it's like his voice and stuff. Like I think it works for Daredevil, mm-hmm. but it's like he doesn't sound super tough. Or yeah. even fucking John Barenthal who played Punisher. Uh, I mean, he's not that far off in Punisher. John Barenthal. He was Shane in The Walking Dead, and he played Punisher in Daredevil season two. Shane in The Walking Dead. Jesus. I'm. Or John. Yeah, John Barenthal. Right? Did I say Shane Barenthal? There. I got. Uh... John Barleycorn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's his Barenthal's his okay. name. No, yeah. Uh, yeah. Who we I got? actually would have been totally fine with him. John Barenthal. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see this guy. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he, he wouldn't be bad. No, Although, he's brooding. He's, you got uh, it. He doesn't. He doesn't exude the uh, the Bruce Wayne though. No, he. And, but, but, but I mean, this is the, this the script movie. doesn't have a lot exactly. of Bruce You're Wayne right. in it. There is no fucking GQ'd out Bruce. Yeah, Wayne. Yeah, like if you want to talk about that, Christian Bale is fucking perfect. Like yeah. he was Bruce Wayne and mm-hmm. he was Batman. You know, I I do agree with your John Barenthal very much. Then yeah, because he was a great Punisher, incredible Punisher. Yeah, that was the best. I can't wait thing for his series. Whole, that was the best thing about the whole fucking Daredevil series. season two. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, that's a great idea. Um, I also like the idea of when they cross over. There's always all these actors always end up crossing over from Marvel to DC or mm-hmm. you know back and forth. I always think that's fun. So I would throw in John Barron. He, I think he'd be good. Yeah, absolutely. He he could he could seem young enough. He could seem like a guy in his like late twenties, early thirties. I, yeah. I mean, it's it's just one of those not, situations. He's not jacked. No, know? but he could, he could he's probably wiry. get jacked. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm I'm down with it. Yeah, he's got the voice. Mm-hmm. I, I could easily see that guy. I'd oh, yeah. be scared of that guy in a fucking alleyway. Yeah, no, absolutely. He was uh, he was given like that what kind of like New York kind of accent yeah. in the other one. In, in yeah, the in Daredevil. Punisher. Yeah, but I mean, he was one of my favorite characters in The Walking Dead, mm-hmm. and I I think that dude's going to be incredible. Like he's already doing great stuff. I think he's going to be great. I could easily see that guy as Batman. Well, yeah, you're you're nobody in Hollywood until you're a superhero nowadays, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, what fucking... Like, can you even name me a movie coming out that's not a superhero movie? Mm. Like, Doctor Strange is the next movie I can think of coming right. out. Right, yeah. What, what, do you have any thoughts on Doctor, Doctor Strange? Strange? I think yeah. it looks fucking awesome. It looks it, different. It looks interesting, yeah. Yeah, like, the effects and stuff look really cool. It looks yeah. different. Right. Um, that was the thing, because, like, after Age of Ultron, which I love all the Marvel movies, like, even the ones that are kind of considered bad, I still enjoy. Sure. Um, I enjoy them when I could watch them on FX. Yeah. In my, in my room. Like, am I going to go out of my way to watch Thor again? Probably not. But I right. still think Thor's a totally fine movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. Thor 2 kind of... but I uh, actually like Thor 2 a little better. Okay. Um, right. But, I mean, they're both, like, on the low end for me. Yeah. No, absolutely. But, like, I love Civil War. Um, I think... I, like, after... So after Age of Ultron, I was mm-hmm. like, man, I'm so fucking tired of comic book movies. Oh, yeah. it was Age of Ultron. And was, was there another one that came out before that? Uh, was it... Ant-Man was shortly after. Ant-Man was great. Yeah, and that was uh-huh. the thing. So, like, Age of Ultron, I'm like, I think I'm like I'm kind of tired. Like, yeah. it was just another big movie. And I loved Ultron, but, I mean, I thought the first movie was better. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I want a break. I didn't see Ant-Man right away. I uh-huh. waited until it came to, like, a dollar theater by us to get movies kind of, sure. like, right before they come to Blu-ray and shit. So we went and saw it there for, like, a buck. And I was right. like, man, Ant-Man was fucking awesome. Like, I yeah. was totally into it again. And by, like, by the time Civil War rolled around, I was fucking ready. And, they like, do. Deadpool was before that. And Deadpool was fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. And then Batman v Superman, I was like, man, that sucked. So then Civil War, I was ready. Yeah. With the Ant-Man, um, I feel like Marvel does a great job with origin movies. Yeah. Excellent and job. Everybody gets tired of origin movies. I'm like, look, I don't know this fucking character. I need to know the origin. Yeah. And you saying how tired you were getting of it i recently looked at the timeline of all the movies yeah. coming out to fucking 2020. 2020 oh my god like how two more avengers movies we got for, for the kids 
I get it. The next year fucking... alone is insane. So we got Doctor Strange in November. Uh-huh. Next year we get Wolverine, the mm-hmm. third Wolverine movie. We God, get Wonder Woman. We get Justice League. We get oh. Spider Man. Okay. We get. I think there's another one. Uh, that's all I can remember. I don't know Infinity Wars, but no, that's not tomorrow. That's not yeah. next uh, year. But but like next summer has like four superhero movies. Yeah, DC's got a lot of work to do, and they're doing a fucking shitty job. I'm yeah. sorry. Um, I yeah, su- I, you didn't see Suicide Squad, did you? Not that yet. That was even even bigger disappointment than Batman v Superman. Yeah, I've been meaning to see it, but uh, I won't pay for it. I'm just waiting for a decent. They're, they just announced uh, the extended cut that I could that yeah. I could watch. They just announced the extended cut, and I know I'm going to have to watch it again. Five minutes into that movie, I turned to my fiance and we looked at each other, just like, uh oh, like, yeah, because like she was more excited. She loves Margot Robbie. She loved the Harley Quinn character, uh-huh. and she's really into Will Smith. So that was her end of the movie. Yeah. So we're like, all right, let's go see it together. And like, literally, they're introducing the characters in the first five minutes, and just the editing of the movie, and just the way it's going. Like, we shared a look, just like, like we would have left. Yeah. I, so I'm new to buying online tickets. I don't know if when you leave after you bought an online ticket, if you're able to get a refund from the theater. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, please. So we didn't leave. But like, as soon as they killed the villain, like as soon as that was done, there were still parts of the movie left. I'm like, we're going. Okay. I'm like, the movie's fucking over. I'm out of here. There you go. <laughs> like I it mean, was so bad. The, I, a lot of people share your sentiment. I, I got so angry with both of those movies. It's hard to control myself. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I, it. So I hated Man of Steel. Okay. And then Batman v Superman came out, and it made me like Man of Steel because of how bad it was. Right. And I, I didn't. I didn't hate Man of Steel. I, I hated know, maybe it. Maybe it was the Costner. <sighs> I love me some Costner. <sighs> It's a whole podcast about how I hate that movie. Okay, which maybe I'll bring you in when I do that. Cause sure, I, I'd have to rewatch it. You know, and, I actually uh, been wanting to rewatch it because I yeah. haven't seen it since it came out. So it'd be a good excuse. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was like when Batman v Superman came out, it made that movie look good to me. I was like, you know what? Maybe Man of Steel's not so bad. Yeah, and then when Suicide Squad bad. came out, I was like, you know what? Maybe Batman v Superman isn't that bad. Well, that's not a good. Uh, no, that's not good. When they're just going to beat us into submission. When, when the next movie they put out is fucking worse than the one before, and you're like, you know, man, I guess, yeah, I Superman wasn't that bad. Yeah, you know, that's uh, that's not a good. That's not a good sign of things uh, happening <laughs> yeah. the right way. It was just. It makes me angry, but mm-hmm. they, yeah, they announced the extended edition. I'm gonna watch it because uh, Suicide Squad. I just I need to see everything. I need yeah. to know. I just yeah, need absolutely. to know. You know, you you said that you enjoyed uh, uh, Deadpool. Yeah. And, um, and yeah. The, when I watched it the first time around... I forgot you I did actually, not like that movie. I wasn't a big fan of it. Um, the jokes just uh, wore on me. Um, I didn't like what was going on with... Uh, with his girlfriend, you know, I just wanted yeah. her to die to make uh, <laughs> him to go make Deadpool, you know, insane, but, you know, in a loony way. I thought as much as they were breaking the fourth wall, yeah. I thought that there should have been more cartoon-esque things going on. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, I've read uh, a couple Dare, uh, I mean, uh, Deadpools, and I actually just watched it yesterday again because it's on HBO. Yeah, we watched it actually in the back room yeah. the other day. It's not bad. When uh, when you could turn away and not watch uh, a, oh, I, a couple of the scenes, I love that movie. But uh, you know, everything I mean, about listen, it, I got, I got my opinion. What yeah, are you gonna yeah, do? Yeah. So that's uh, so. I, there's actually a script for Deadpool as well. Maybe that would be okay. a good one because the script is like seventy percent of what the movie turned out to be. The script right. leaked in 2010. Mm-hmm. They reworked it a little bit for the movie, but they used that script for the movie. Gotcha. So maybe that'd be a good one to bring you back for. Yeah, I'd be down. Um, I'd love to check it out. Yeah, because honestly, reading it, you'd be surprised at a lot of the swearing in that movie that you thought was ad libbed is yeah. fucking word for word in that script. It's kind of weird reading. But he wrote it, didn't he? Uh, no, these Ryan other Reynolds? these two other guys wrote it. I can't remember their names, but okay. these two guys wrote it. He he like I don't. I think he helped write the final version. Uh-huh. Like they kind of the three of them sure. put it together. Like he tried so hard to get that movie made, he did everything he could. Yeah, so. I know it's been like ten years in the making that he yeah. wanted to be that character. Yeah, like literally the script leaked in 2010. I don't know when it was written, mm-hmm. but Wolverine, I think it was 2009, and yeah. that was his first time as Deadpool. So that like since then he was trying to get it made. So 
I know he there's stories of like him like sleeping on those guys' couches as they were working on it and shit yeah. like that, like possibly putting some of his own money towards it and stuff yeah, like that. Definitely. The yeah. guy's fucking rich. If, yeah. He better and put some money into it. Fucking paid off gangbusters for everybody involved. Yeah. So well, it was the highest uh, grossing R rated movie ever. Be- beating out the Matrix Reloaded. Oh. Matrix Reloaded was, was rated the highest R? grossing R rated movie. Yeah. I, why? I mean Well, that's for another those, story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's for yeah. another time. But uh, I don't know um, what else we could discuss about dark uh, about the dark <laughs> night. I mean, uh, I mean, I think that I think we pretty much covered it. There's, it's just, it's a, it would have been a weird movie. All right. So your final thought on the movie? It would have been too dark. Yeah. I would. I kind of the same complaints everybody has about like Batman v Superman and Suicide Squad. Right. Just not enough of the character that we all know and love is there. Mm-hmm. It's too different. Like I'm totally fine with different, but it's too different. It's it's weird, and it's it's it's, it's too much like a comic book. And it's right. weird that the guy who wrote the comic and the movie made it so different. Yeah, hearing you say that, I think it is a lot like a comic book, but not a very good one. No. Um, I I'll I feel be the like first the- to say it. I'm not that big of a frank miller fan okay yeah like he's he's fucking held up there as a god i love year one it's one of my favorite batman books everything else it's like a like hate for me there's no other love for me from frank miller with with this movie i feel like the general public couldn't get into it no um sitting there watching it on screen there is some really cool aspects of it uh the whole the whole of the of the movie i would probably walk out saying what the fuck did I just watch? Yeah, like that was a weird um, thing. Can't after, wait to see when they reboot it. After knowing uh, the cartoon and knowing the comic and going in, I mean, let's say I didn't read the script and going into the movie hoping to see the iconic I would have walked out like, what the fuck did I just see? Why was Alfred a fucking black mechanic? Yeah. Like, Why is he what a is this mechanic? movie? What's going on? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, Selena Kyle, black dominatrix. I love it. <laughs> I love it. But uh why is Bruce know? an orphan working at a garage? Yeah, that you know, that's odd. I mean, give me my uh gadgets. I mean, yeah. besides besides the syringes and the truth serum and him yeah. fucking making black tar, you know, I, I mean, don't know if you remember I actually cool. I was going to bring this up earlier. I totally forgot. There's literally a, a gear up scene where it's uh-huh. him putting on his equipment and they list the shit that he's like carrying with uh-huh. him and i just picture somebody just hauling a backpack full of shit on his back because there's just so much like smoke grenades syringes yeah blades not like just all this shit I'm like no one person can carry all of this you know yeah there's no jumping. reference of a utility belt or anything like you're just assuming this shit's like in his cape like some dude on the corner who moves his coat and has some watches hanging there to sell like how does he carry all this? No, you're absolutely right. And I know that we're wrapping up here, but one of these one of the small things that I remember was when he's jumping from uh rooftop to rooftop. Yeah. And they're saying, Oh my god, what do they say? They're saying th- there's some narration going on and they say air conditioners, uh fucking steel grating, <laughs> uh fucking windows, <laughs> skylights. This is the world of the Batman. I'm like this the world of the batman yeah are you, uh, air conditioners and, <laughs> and skylights fuck out of here yeah. what are you talking about like i like i get what he's always going for but it's just definitely he's, i i just can't uh, see into this dude's mind like mm-hmm. it's amazing that he did write the books that he wrote and they became as big as they are this i just don't see it no absolutely and you know in a nutshell the movie sounds interesting probably wouldn't be great in the box office uh but you know, you've always got your uh, your niche audience. I'm sure people, you know, small it would be groups. one of those fun things to collect yeah, in the years. Absolutely. But like, Batman Begins was the right way to take it. It's got the mm-hmm. right amount of darkness yeah. and Love humor. Batman Begins. Yeah, it's probably the best Batman movie. I mean, The Dark Knight is mm-hmm. amazing. But like, the thing about Dark Knight between Batman Begins for me is Batman Begins. You look at that city, the portrayal of it, and that looks like fucking Gotham City. Yep. Dark Knight, I mean, I know we're from Chicago, but to me, it looks like Chicago. Everything's nice and clean. Right. And like, you it was, is a little too clean with yeah. the bridges and the fucking. And then, like, you see Batman Begins, like, oh, here's the Narrows, and there's fucking mm-hmm. laundry hanging all over the place. This place looks like a dump. Right. And, and they had, like, a few, like, uh, CG, I guess, like, uh, helicopter scenes to make the Narrows look like 
Yeah. Some fucked up shit, and then everything is grungy. Yeah. So, I yeah. Gr- that's a good... Grunge is the best way. Like, uh-huh. Batman Begins looks grungy. Dark Knight looks... It's a very polished, clean movie. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's standing on the fucking Sears Tower with his yeah. fucking binoculars. Awesome cinematography, but yeah. not... I mean, The Dark Knight's Gotham. an incredible fucking movie. I'm not going to sit here and yeah, say no, it, but absolutely. to me, Batman Begins is the epitome of a Batman movie. Absolutely. But, I mean, I, I think that that's all I got. We've been going for a while. Yeah, absolutely. This um, is this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, it has. Um, I have social media. Do you do social media? Do you want to plug anything? Twitter, um, Facebook, or anything? Do you yeah, care about uh, any well, of that? No, I guess so. I, I'm always looking to, you know, I'm up to, I have 55 followers on oh, Twitter. Man. And uh, I, I can always get more. <laughs> um, I constantly watch my Twitter. Not true, but a little <laughs> bit. Uh, at Zerpelman. Uh, it's like... Purple man, but with a Z. Okay. So at Zerpelman, you could see me there. I'm eating a sandwich. You know, I got my Colt Cabana shit on. <laughs> God, and, I love you that know, picture. Send me a tweet. You know, the picture I, hanging on uh, the fridge right next to us. Yeah, there it is. And you know, I'll, I'll get back to you if I, if I have time. You know, I have 55 followers, so I gotta I gotta talk to everybody. You're about to have 56. And <laughs> oh yeah, all right. And for uh, for yourself, Jeremy, this uh, has been this has been uh, an honor. I want to thank you oh, for thanks, uh, letting me on. Uh, oh no problem. This has been letting me awesome. on the first, uh, or I guess it's the one point yeah, this, five. Maybe this will definitely. I mean, uh, Berto recorded the episode zero, but that was more of an explanation. This is the first actual episode. Well, and this will probably be the first one that goes up. Listen, I had a lot of fun. I had a good time uh, reading this script, my first script. About Batman, something I really enjoy. Yeah, and you know, I appreciate it. I I hope to be back on. And oh, I mean, we've already I've already given you the next absolutely. script, and we'll talk about that in the future. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, man, thanks for having me. It's been real great, everybody. Thanks Thank for you, listening. Everybody.